Is it possible to turn this yellow sand land into fertile soil? Crops like corn, tomatoes, sorghum, and sunflowers, transforming more than 200 hectares of sand dunes into an oasis, all within six months. Little, if any, rain and scorching temperatures—not exactly ideal conditions to support vegetation. But turning that logic on its head is this desert in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. According to our calculation, there are over 70 kinds of crops growing here. Many are not planted by us, but they just grow themselves. Crops like corn, tomatoes, sorghum, and sunflowers, transforming more than 200 hectares of sand dunes into an oasis, all within six months. It's all thanks to new technology developed by researchers at Chongqing Jiatong University. They developed a paste made of a substance found naturally in plant cell walls. When it's added to sand, it's able to retain water, nutrients, and air. The costs of artificial materials and machines for transforming sand into soil is lower compared with controlled environmental agriculture and reclamation. The research team has big future plans. This fall, it hopes to transform an additional 200 hectares of desert, and possibly more than 13,000 in the next few years. The method could be promising for China. In three years, the country hopes to reforest 50 percent of degraded desert land that can be treated. By 2030, the United Nations is aiming to reach zero growth of desert farmland around the world. So China's breakthrough experiment in converting sand to soil is promising for making land seemingly hostile to life fertile ground. Zhao Ri lives near the desert. He has a new job, working in a solar power station. For thousand years, there's nothing here but sand in the middle of the Kubuqi Desert, and now this is one of the largest solar power stations in northwest China. And it only took two years to build this oasis here. The solar power station generates 500 million kilowatt hours every year. It also generates income. For local people, we've hired local people for construction and maintenance work. They also become shareholders by leasing land to us. I used to earn two to three thousand yuan a year. Now I get paid forty thousand yuan a year. It's a big difference. This is an example of the desert economy in Kubuqi. It's part of the efforts of a private company called Eline to roll back desertification. The core of it is to balance the relationship between government, enterprises, farmers, and ecological environment. Raising the income of local people is vital to the success, and the environment is also benefiting. The sandstorms are much fewer, and the movement of the sand dunes has also slowed. Various ways are being developed to improve efficiency and reduce cost, like reserving 40 days of water for a tree, and planting licorice that sells for around 10 yuan per kilogram in the market. The ecological management in the desert must be economical and respect nature and market rules.
The desert economy model in Kubuchi has turned 6,000 square kilometers of desert green, created 500 billion yuan in value, and helped 100,000 farmers out of poverty. We believe this is a model that can be replicated, that can have multiplier effect, and it can be replicated everywhere in the world where we have the right kind of building blocks. What I hear. Desertification affects over a fifth of China's territory and a third of its people. After years of efforts in legislation, policy, finance, mechanism, and technology innovation, China has become one of the few countries in the world that has reduced the areas under threat. Is it possible to turn this yellow sand land into a fertile soil? We plant a family of flowering plants having porous fruits. And root modules that can extract nitrogen from the air, so the sand land can gradually become fertile soil. Dong has been working for Kubuchi Desert Technology Institution since she graduated from Beijing Forestry University. The research center is founded by Alien Resources, a private enterprise specializing in sustainable land management. They discovered growing licorice used in Chinese herb medicine in difficult terrain is not only good for business. But also for the environment. Licorice grows rhizobia, so it has nitrogen fixation. After the land has been planted with licorice, it can quickly change to soil, and is then fertile for agriculture. Apart from growing the rice species, uninterrupted sunlight provides much potential for capturing large quantities of solar energy. Exploiting this resource would help China meet both its energy requirements and its commitments to saving the environment. We make a flat-out effort to develop the industry of forestry in the desert. Desert industry serves both commercial and environmental needs. As a result of improvements in the environment, natural lakes peppered round. Encourage locals to return and new migrants to arrive. Today, hundreds of different breeds of birds have settled here. Local herdsmen call them beautiful angels and try hard to protect them, so their numbers are likely to rise in coming years. Not only the numbers of birds will continue to increase, but also the region's attractions for investors. China is boosting its efforts at preventing the spread of desert lands. Working with private companies, the work in Kubuchi Desert has become a flagship project of these efforts. During the past five years, China has restored over 10 million hectares of land affected by desertification. The desert area used to increase by 10,000 square kilometers every year. Now it shrinks by 2,400 square kilometers annually. Since 2016, China has used public-private partnerships in the fight against the desertification, with companies investing in tourism and agricultural projects, and farmers getting subsidies. Decades ago, this was a desolate desert. Now it's a garden, a tourism attraction in the middle of the desert. Not only it turns the land green, but it also generates income for local people, so that such projects could be sustainable and expanded to more areas. China is also working with the United Nations, and efforts to control desertification has extended across the nation's border. I think in United Nations we believe this is a model that can be replicated, that can have multiplier effect, and it can be replicated everywhere in the world where we have the right kind of building blocks. What I hear. Yet it is too early to declare victory. China has one of the world's largest desert areas. One fourth of the nation's territory is affected by desertification. Ninety-five percent of that is along the Belt and Road Economic Zone that the country strives to revive. It requires great efforts to turn desert into green land. Yet it will require more to keep it this way. Severe desertification is also taking a toll on agricultural and economic developments as encroaching sands take over more and more of China's already lacking arable land. But in a desert area in northwest China's Shanxi Province, residents are fighting to balance the ecosystem for a better life. Jia Xiaoyi has the story. Ten years ago, this place was barren and full of sandstorms. But now greenery fills this place, and the deserts are becoming fertile land. Zhang Yinlong is the head of a shelter belt in Mao Wusu Desert of Shenmu, a remote county in Shanxi Province. 
He's in his 50s now, and he's been trying to fix the dunes over the last 12 years. It's only with a stable soil condition that vegetation can grow well. You see the grass? It's a good example. The shutter belt is located on the lowest plateau in North Shaanxi, and desertification is its biggest obstacle. The area covers more than 20,000 hectares, with 24 million trees to prevent more sand dunes. But he believes combating desertification is more than just planting trees. The quality of life must be taken into consideration for sustainable growth. With the gradual improvement of the ecosystem, the return of population is inevitable. Then it's necessary to provide them with enough income through our sand industry. He has persuaded farmers to grow economy-driven crops and plants, and these efforts have started to bear fruit. The red flower fields planted last year brought farmers direct earnings of 120,000 yuan and drove the local economy up by 400,000 yuan. I didn't expect to see such beautiful rapeseed flowers. I'm very shocked. Officials have also come to realize that achieving both ecological and economic benefits is a mark of development. We'll combine desertification prevention with the increase of income for farmers. Income through forestry should be about 30 percent of the entire income of poor households. And that will make its way to the family table. Zhang Yinglong hopes the farm won't become part of the wasteland and that its efforts will prevent people from relocating away from the grasslands. And all that might just hold back the harsh desert in the long run. Zhang Shaoyi, CGTN.